Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how we can implement load testing using Artillery, which is an open source load testing library that allows us to run simple load tests against our backend applications. In our case, a Nest.js backend, we're going to be able to run this against our APIs and make sure not only that they are functionally correct, but that they're able to actually handle the levels of load we expect when running in production. So this is going to ensure that our code is always performant and that we have no issues when our traffic is actually spiking. And the way we do this is by writing artillery test configuration files and then using the artillery CLI to run these tests against our backend. Let's go ahead and see how we can do this in this video. I'll see you there. Now, real quick, before we jump in, I just want to let you know that my latest course building a shopping app with Next.js, Nest.js, and Prisma is live. Now, this course, in my opinion, is the best way to build a full stack application today, utilizing the latest and greatest Next.js app directory approach with, of course, the structure and great dependency injection of a Nest.js backend combined with an excellent modern type safe ORM like Prisma to interact with a Postgres database. So you can see everything you're gonna learn in this course down below. I'll leave a link to this page where you can learn more and check it out. Thanks so much for all of your support and let's jump right into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by creating our Nest.js application, which we're gonna load test using Artillery. Let's go ahead and use the Nest CLI to do this. So if you don't have the Nest.js CLI, Simply install globally-g at nest.js slash CLI at latest to go ahead and install it. So once you've got the CLI installed, we can go ahead and use it to initialize a new project. So I'll go ahead and run nest new, and I'll call this artillery load testing. I'll go ahead and use yarn as our package manager in this application. So go ahead and wait until the project has finished installing and setting up. All right, so with our project successfully installed, I'll go ahead and now CD into the directory. And let's go ahead and open it up in a code editor. So we have our default Nest.js application out of the box here with our main.ts file initializing our HTTP server where we're creating our root application here using the Nest factory and then listening for incoming HTTP traffic on port 3000. By default, we have the app module with a single app controller set up to receive traffic on the root get route that calls the app service get hello function. So the app service, which we're injecting in the app controller, is simply returning this hello world stub string through the get route. So let's go ahead and start up our development server with pnpm start dev to ensure our application starts up okay. And then I'll open up Postman to try testing out this API. So on Postman, I'll go ahead and launch a new GET request. And let's go ahead and launch a GET request to localhost 3000, where our HTTP server is listening for traffic. And we get back a 200 status hello world string as expected. So our application is up and running and working as expected. This is great. Now we, what we want to do is implement artillery load testing in this application so that just like unit tests or end-to-end -end tests, we can actually run a suite of tests to measure the performance of our application, which is what Artillery allows us to do. Because even though our application might be working at a functional level by returning the expected result, if our application isn't performant and responding to users under load in a proper way, then it's not going to be ready for production traffic. Artillery is going to allow us to actually make sure our application is ready for high demand and still able to cope with this. So let's go ahead and get started with implementing artillery load testing. The first step is going to be to go ahead and install the artillery library. So I'll use yarn add dash D for development. And we want artillery. So go ahead and install artillery dependency. All right, so with artillery properly installed now, let's go ahead and go back to our application where we're going to define an artillery test file that's going to describe how to actually run our tests. So this is going to be a YAML formatted file that follows a standard artillery convention. So let's go ahead and create this file in the root of our project and call it artillery.yaml. So I've gone ahead and opened up the artillery docs where we're going to go ahead and describe a few concepts that are going to be implemented inside of this artillery YAML file. 
So I'll leave the link to this docs below. However, let's jump in at a high level to see how artillery works. So artillery, we can see here, works by putting load on our server by launching virtual users, which are arriving in our app in certain phases. So virtual users are going to emulate real life users interacting with our app, and they'll be going through our application depending on the phases that we describe in this artillery YAML file. So as we see here, the load phase tells artillery how many virtual users to create over a period of time. So these virtual users are going to represent real life users actually requesting our API over periods of time. And then we measure the performance as this load changes over time. So again, I highly recommend reading through this documentation in its entirety. It's a very short read here. I'll leave a link below so you can read through it in more depth. Let's go back to our artillery.yaml and start implementing some of these concepts. So the first key is going to be config, which is the root key for the artillery test file. Now we have to go ahead and specify the target, which is going to be the actual address or the API URL that we're going to be requesting. In our case, for local development, that'll be at localhost 3000. So now we know where we're requesting. We now define our phases that we're going to be putting these virtual users through. Now you can have as many phases as you'd like. This takes in an array. However, in our case, we're going to go ahead and follow a very standard pattern in load testing where we implement three phases. One, a warm up phase where we have a few users. Then we ramp up the load over time. And finally, we spike to a large number of users and have that period of sustained load and measure how our API responds to this. So let's describe these three phases by describing this first one where we specify the duration. So how long is the phase going to last for? So we'll say this first warm up phase will last 60 seconds. And then we specify the arrival rate. So this is going to be the number of virtual users that actually get created during this phase. So essentially, it's the new amount of users that are being introduced. So I'll go ahead and specify arrival rate of one, and then we're going to have a maximum ramp to of five, meaning we'll cap five virtual users. All right, and then we'll go ahead and give this a name of warm up. So now we have the first phase done. Let's describe the ramp up phase. So this phase, I want again, 60 seconds. The arrival rate is now going to be increased to five virtual users. Now our ramp two, I'll set this to 10 virtual users and I'll go ahead and give this one a name of ramp up. So now our final stage, I want it to last 30 seconds and give it a rival rate of 10 virtual users and then ramp two, 30 virtual users. So this will be the spike phase. So now we have our three phases defined. It's important to note that when we're describing the duration, arrival rate, and ramp two here, what we're really saying is that over this period of 30 seconds, we want to introduce 10 virtual users. Now this is going to be spread evenly over the entire duration of the phase. So artillery is automatically going to handle the math of how many users we need to introduce to ensure we have a consistent load that will actually ramp to 30 by the end of the phase. So with our first set of phases complete, let's go ahead and now introduce a few plugins that we can use in our artillery test to make our results more useful. So we have a plugins key we now use, and I want to use three plugins, ensure, appdex, and metrics by endpoint. So ensure is going to allow us to actually make some assertions in this test and say that we expect certain response times to occur. Otherwise, we will fail the test and exit with an error code. Appdex is a measurement of user satisfaction in an API, given some criteria of how it should perform. And finally, metrics by endpoint is going to allow us to scrape some metrics. Let's go ahead and further configure these plugins. So for Appdex, I want to say the threshold, meaning the expected value for our response times, should be no greater than 100 milliseconds. If it's greater than this, then we want this to start negatively affecting the AppDex score. Now we'll configure the Ensure plugin using thresholds. So in thresholds, we now specify the actual criteria for Ensure. To do this, we say HTTP.ResponseTime 
dot p and now you can say whatever percentile you are actually targeting here so in our case i want to target the 99th percentile of http response times and say that i expect these to be completing in 100 milliseconds or better so again what this is saying is that 99 percent of all requests in the test should perform at 100 milliseconds or better otherwise ensure will be violated let's go ahead and add another one here so response time dot p 95 75 milliseconds so we expect 95 percent of our requests to complete within 75 milliseconds so now we have our test configured we need to actually describe to artillery how to run the test so we do this in the scenario section so a scenario is essentially a plan for the requests that a single virtual user will execute. So we go ahead and specify this using the flow key here. And inside of flow, we can now introduce a loop. So we're going to go ahead and loop. And inside of loop, we now actually implement the API call that we want to make. So the virtual user is going to make this many calls as we specify in this loop. In our case, I want to make a get request. So we use dash get and specify the URL should be at slash, meaning we want to access our Nest.js default app controller URL. And then we go ahead and specify the loop count here. So I'll say 100, meaning that each virtual user should execute this request 100 times before completing the test. So again, as we defined in our phase here, when a new virtual user arrives to our test, they will then call this API 100 times over the duration of the phase. All right, so in our application in a second terminal, we can now use yarn artillery to target the artillery library and specify run and then pass in our test file to execute our test. So now we've gone ahead and executed our artillery test it's now executing the first phase we've specified here, the warm-up phase, which is executing over 60 seconds and evenly creating one new virtual user with a maximum of five. So again, this happens gradually over the course of the test. So in this case, we'll have one new virtual user every 15 seconds introduced and following into this loop here, calling our API 100 times. So lastly, make sure this URL here is properly indented inside of the get. So with this in place, I've gone ahead and started up our development server in one tab using yarn start dev. And in a second tab, we can now trigger the artillery library using yarn artillery and then use the run command and specify the path to our test configuration. So this is going to go ahead and start executing our first phase here, the warm-up phase, which again occurs over 60 seconds, and this is going to create a new virtual user every 15 seconds since we are creating one virtual user with a maximum of five over this entire phase. So each new virtual user will enter in this loop and call our API route 100 times. So as the test progresses, we should see artillery start outputting some details about the test thanks to our metrics endpoint plugin so we can see here our console output which is outputting the metrics for this period so we can see things like the actual mean or average response time which is coming in at 0.2 milliseconds which is excellent and we can see our overall aggregate re request rate given this current phase so at this point we're launching 212 requests per second so now we've transitioned into the second stage and we can see the number of requests per second increasing as we're introducing more virtual users into the test. So this is going to keep increasing into our spike phase. We should see response times start to increase a bit, but you can see overall we're still very low at barely a millisecond because we're not really doing anything in our API. We're simply returning immediately. But now we know if we introduce any additional changes, we can simply rerun this test to ensure we have no performance regression, which makes it very easy to implement very performant APIs with the help of artillery. 
So let's go ahead and wait for the test to complete successfully. Okay, so now we can see our artillery test has completed successfully. We can see our checks here from Ensure have passed successfully since our response times are well under 175 milliseconds, coming at an average of 0.1, which is very good, even under 1600 requests per second. We can see our AppDex score coming back as a one, meaning excellent, and our test completed successfully. So let's go ahead and add this command we use to run the test directly in our package JSON so that we can rerun this test much more easily. So I'll go into our package JSON and just like we have test scripts here from Nest.js to run unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, we can go ahead and add a new test colon artillery command, which is going to use the artillery CLI to go ahead and run the test. So we'll use artillery run and then point to our artillery.yaml file. So let's go ahead and put in a bug to our application so we can actually see artillery catching this in real time. So let's go ahead and change get hello to be async. And now inside of the app service, let's change this to be an asynchronous function where I want to go ahead and still return hello world. But now I want to go ahead and implement some code that's going to block the API and essentially implement a fake performance issue. So to do this, we can simply await a call to new promise. So we get passed in the resolve callback function and we immediately call resolve after a certain amount of time. So we can use set timeout and pass in the resolve function to get executed. And the second parameter I'll say after 300 milliseconds, then we can resolve the promise. So again, this is going to await for 300 milliseconds here and then return hello world. So this is going to cause performance issues in our API since we're now blocking the request from finishing. Let's go ahead and see artillery catch this in action by rerunning our test script yarn test artillery. So now you can see as our test is running, our response times have immediately jumped up to 300 milliseconds. And this is just as expected since our promise is now awaiting for that period of time. It's taking this much longer for our requests to complete. So let's go ahead and wait till the test completes and see the results from artillery. All right, so now our test has completed and you can see we've actually exited with exit code one and the test itself has failed because we have now implemented this performance bug and artillery has caught it by implementing our ensure checks here because our response times are not coming back in under 100 milliseconds as expected and our app deck score here is a poor performing so this is great it means artillery has actually caught this performance issue in our application so hopefully you can see the power in adding a test like this to your CI CD pipeline for your Node.js applications because whenever you implement changes between commits, you can simply run your test suite against those changes and see if those new changes are causing any performance issues.